in my presentation of the heart poles and their dynamics in the female and male physical bodies, I feel it vitally important to stress that the heart dynamic in the female body cannot become fully viable without interfacing with the male heart dynamic. The same is true of the male heart and its interactive function with the female heart poles. The Lemurian word for kiss was kif. This also means light or fire riding, the actual turning and moving of the heart's energy system, which produces what Stan Tennant and Dan Winters refer to in their research as the alphabet of the heart. For the Lemurians, a kiss was reserved for awakening another human being to the breath, the Hawaiian loha, of the one loving presence. In the heart of one human gender is the path to receive the kiss of the other. Therefore, it is as important for men and women to work with the opposite gender heart dynamic as it is their own. They may do this as each gender contains an astral version of the heart pole or poles and accompanying schematic of the opposite polarity. The feminine poles of the heart form a sacred arc. This was known and understood as the central mystery of the lunar divine feminine mysteries. My Akashic insights have revealed to me that the first mechanical arc was given to the earth during the days of Atlantis by the blue star ultra-terrestrials of Rigel in the constellation of Orion. Yet this first ark was not given to the Atlanteans, but to the people who in that age occupied Tibet. These Tibetans were a mixture of strong blue star genetics and earth races of that time. They called themselves Sunborn as they held the solar mysteries for the planet. Within the sacred center of the An is a chamber which contains a device that is a working facsimile of the human feminine heart arc. In the mechanism of the blue star arc of grace, there is a sphere that contains within it the three pole dynamic of the feminine human heart. In this sphere called the Kating, the charge of the moon heart pole is contained within a cobalt sphere with the Gaia pole charges held by the two obsidian spheres. Through the Katim and certain other devices in the On, powerful energy transmissions from Rigel and Betelgeuse in Orion are brought to Earth. The Ark is still with the Earth. It was gifted us to aid humanity in that age of spiritually surviving the deluge to come and the ultimate ascension of the planet in this current time. Here you see the diagram of the feminine heart arc. The first node, moon heart pole, allows the female to become the vessel not only for a child, but for the perpetuation of the creatrix current through the species. It is the special chip inserted into the heart arc mechanism which gives the whole Merkaba intelligence to interface with the creatrix field of Gaia. The second nodes A and B, the Gaia poles. These heart poles act as small pulsars reversing polarity between each other to bring through the holographic wave form of the Gaia field. The third node, Creatrix Waveform and Gaia Field. The energy waveform coming out of the heart of Gaia, Earth, creates a field of its own generation. This field interacts with all life, sustaining and evolving it in accordance with the evolution of Gaia herself. The fourth nodes, A and B, left and right terminus. Ventricles connecting the biophysical poles on the magnetic and cellular level. The fifth node is the vault of heaven, the womb of the goddess creatrix.
The sixth node, Labyrinth of On. On means both arc and holy light, or rather, light beyond the spectrum of frictional matter, what Thoth refers to as the light that does not burn. Within the spiral labyrinth of the feminine heart arc is the gestating dynamic of the Christ child, the Christic power and presence of the pure soul dynamic. This gestation is processed in continuum by the creatrix waves moving through the Gaia field. The seventh note, solar pillar of light. The inseminating vehicle being drawn into the heart arc from the wellspring of the solar logos in the soul. The solar logos is a powerful generator of Christ awakening. As the solar pillar of light moves through the labyrinth of On and the Gaia field, it is the generator for the signals which open the birth canal in the Dew Crescent. Node 8 is the Dew Crescent. This crescent could be equated to the curve of the womb upon the pelvis. In the heart arc, it collects the Dew or the Mana being generated from the dynamic interface between the solar pillar of light moving through the heart moon and into and through the labyrinth. The dew mana is a form of prima matra or first matter containing rhodium and iridium. A variation of this substance is known in esoteric energy circles today as white powder gold. It can also be found in another variation in which I have previously called prima matra powder. However, the dew mana of the heart arc is composed of a specific mixture of rhodium, iridium, and other elements on a subatomic level. In this sense, it is the mother's milk of the heart, nourishing the Christ child in its labyrinth manger of light. The ninth node, solar rays of Hu. In Celtic mythology, Hu is a patriarch akin to Noah. Mary Kane, in her book, The Glastonbury Zodiac, states that Hu was the teacher of mankind. One of his symbols was the arrowhead, the wedge of cuneiform writing. The giant Hu beheld three pillars of light on which were inscribed all science and knowledge. From the Akashic Library of Thoth, I receive that Hu represents solar intelligence spawned from the superluminal generative power of the Holy Trinity, source, receptor, unifier. Within the dynamic of the feminine heart arc, the solar rays of Hu are the primary Christic penetration of the world, reality, earth, by the Queen of Heaven, the Mother Principle. From her womb is rayed the hope of the world. The solar rays of Hu are the strength of the female heart and her body and mind. The ability of the woman to endure, to give birth, to open her body, mind and heart to creation. The tenth nodes A and B, six Magda rays. The hope of the world is flanked by the six Magda rays. From Thoth I received many years ago that Magda is a name for the feminine heart of the earth in its form of having been unrevealed to the world. The Magda then is an energy dynamic of the central sun atoma of the planet. The central sun of earth is of course within the solar mysteries, but it is an essentially feminine being. It is a solar feminine. Here we have the higher mysteries unfolding, where solar and lunar refers to energy sequencing and not a specific gender polarity. The Magda is that aspect of the solar divine feminine of the earth, whose time has not yet come to be revealed to the world. She was shown to me symbolically as the hag, with a dark veil upon her. Yet when the veil was lifted, the radiant beauty of a woman in full bloom was revealed. The Magda rays protect and nourish the solar intelligence. 
whether in a female or male body, attuning to and more fully integrating with the feminine arc of the heart is essential in the ascension process. Both definition of ascension in this context is the quantum burst of light being activated through the quantum cube or holographic intelligence field within the DNA. This burst is ignited in the heart, which is the actual seat of the holographic intelligence field the DNA being its workforce. Only through the principle of divine love can we become the ascended being. Planetary ascension, which translates living beings and Earth to another vibratory world dimension, is only an offshoot of the true ascension of the heart. According to my conversations with both, the soul incarnate moves through various stages of perceiving and activating within the male-female positive-negative charge. As these stages progress, that which was in the plus charge now operates in the minus charge, and vice versa, only to switch back again at another level of energetic contact. This movement is determined by the stages of awareness and the specific focus of that awareness as the current moves through the realms of duality. Consequently, what we are currently experiencing as male and female embodiments is registering in the opposite polarity on another level of being. Therefore, souls incarnate in a male body can access the female polarity of their being and work with their feminine heart arcs. Conversely, a soul currently in a feminine embodiment may access their masculine polarity and more fully integrate the male heart pole. In meditation, see yourself becoming a living on or sacred heart arc. Both females and males may accomplish this. For the woman, place yourself at the center of the heart arc in the vault of heaven position or womb of the goddess creatrix. The male may draw upon this feminine vessel by assuming the solar rays of who, providing the strength for the female heart, body and mind, shining into the holy womb of generation. Whether you be male or female in this incarnation, you can now feel the presence of unity as the heart arc becomes a viable vessel within you. In your personal meditations with the heart arc, find your own path of integrity into her chambers of sovereign wisdom and creation. May the glory light of her sight be upon you. Thank you.